This is the Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and today we are checking out the GT Neo steering wheel by Sim Magic. And look at this bad boy. Look at this beautiful steering wheel. This is a all new direction, all new wheel from Sim Magic, and it is very unique when you look at just the Sim Magic lineup. A lot of cool features about this wheel and things that make it very special and unique. So, just looking at it, I mean, initially, I would think a, a pretty decent price tag, and in reality, this wheel is $289, which I know in yesteryear you could buy a whole wheel set up for $289, but in the reality of today's modern market and direct drive steering wheels, $289 is downright inexpensive. So let's talk about what is all part of this GT Neo steering wheel. There's so much to talk about. You have a lot of functionality. So you've got these four rotary indicators. They've got a plastic knob that has a good texture but the indent, it's a real good significant indent. You can probably hear the click. Working our way outward, we've got our thumbsticks. We've got two of them, one on each side. They're seven way. So you've got up, down, left, right, twist left, twist right, and press in. And again, you can hear that click. There's a really good amount of indent on the twist for a little knob and the click, you can hear it just like I showed it right there. We're, also, we've got 10 backlit buttons. These are really cool. I mean, we've seen on many wheels out there, but they're individually programmable. So with the Sim Magic software, you can change the color of each button. You can see this one. There's no covering on it. It's just plain. It's just clear. It's because these are stickers and they actually give you the stickers. And what's great is they have all the typical things you'd expect in a, a racing car. Plus they actually have some gamer things. So I actually have one that says exit. I actually have one that says left and right because there's things that as sim racers I need on my wheel. So I love that about the sticker set that comes with it. And another cool feature about the GT Neo. You also get two rotary dials on your thumbs, aluminum covered, good amount of click, good amount of indent, and very, very cool. It is a 300 millimeter wheel. So it's a good size, what you'd expect from a butterfly style wheel. And it's made of carbon fiber reinforced polycarbonate. All right, so that is a super strong, super fancy plastic. But plastic wouldn't sound right for what you get. It, it, it's very dense, so when you tap on it, it's solid. It comes in this cool faux, can we use the word faux? Faux forged carbon fiber look. So that's a look to it, but it looks really nice and it is very strong for, for you know, a wheel made of, a, there's no questioning its strength. It's super solid, super, it's weighty, but not ridiculously heavy. Like it's the weight you'd expect it to be for how solid it is. So I really am impressed with the way they did this wheel. You got these rubberized grips, which are kind of cool. Uh, there is a teeny tiny seam, but I think it's already wearing down a little bit from testing. So I don't think that's a factor. I really didn't feel it while driving. Uh, what else to tell you about? I think uh, we've got this 15 digit LED strip on the top. You can program those colors as well. So just looking at the front, You've got the back lights on the dials you can program. You've got the buttons you can program the color of. You've got the LED strip you can program. Those are all features I would expect on a much more expensive wheel. So that's, that's awesome. And again, very robust and strong. Flipping it over, we've got the paddle shifters. We've got our top paddle shifters. Perfect amount of travel. They are aluminum, which means they're really solid. You can move them a little more outward if you like, and they have a good feel to my fingers. Below that, we've got our variable levers, which are great for a clutch or an emergency brake or whatever else. You can actually change it out and make it a button instead of a lever, but that's a good amount of travel if you were gonna use it for a clutch or a handbrake. So I love that as well. Then we've got the updated. So this is the updated version of their NRG style, 10 bearing, all aluminum quick release, a little bit more strong than their original design. So that's an updated feature compared to the other wheels. And inside you can see it has a 13 pin connection. The originals, if you remember, were five pin. So maybe something new to the future. Maybe we'll see a new base. I have nothing to confirm that, but just speculation on my part. Beyond that, you can see right here, and this is what truly makes this wheel unique. And this is actually kind of a special day because I think a lot of times when I'm showing people a really nice wheel from Moza, 
they're like, yeah, but I can't use it on my wheelbase. Then Moza built the hub. Or I'd show you a great wheel from SimMagic and you'd say, yeah, but I can't use it on my base. Well, now SimMagic has built, there we go, Maglink. So you basically bolt this back, you unbolt this whole back section. This plate goes on with any quick release that you can bolt on with the standard quick release thread size. And then it connects with this wire to your PC. And you can use this on any direct drive wheelbase as long as you have an NRG style quick release or you put your quick release on the mag link. So we're gonna test this in another show to see how it works on my other direct drive wheelbase. This is only $20 upgrade, it's not even that significant. So there are so many things that are really cool about this steering wheel. So everything about it would have made me think or assume that this wheel would have been more expensive than $289. So very, very impressive when we just take a look at it. But the proof is in the pudding. It really comes down to how does it work out on track. So before we get to that, we are gonna have to deal with some software because to use all that functionality, you do have to run Sim Pro Manager 2. So you'll download that from the Sim Magic website. And if you're using their wheelbase, you already have it installed. I'd make sure that the it is all updated and I would make sure that I've updated the wheelbase. And when I first put this on, it wasn't immediately recognized. So what you actually have to do is plug this in via USB directly into the computer first. So there's a little USB plug right there. Well, I had one of those USB wires and I just plugged it in. It didn't recognize the wheel. But when I used the SimMagic USB that was supplied with the wheel, it immediately recognized and then I was able to unplug it and put it onto my wheelbase and we are up and running. So now it's time to talk about how this actually performed while out on track. All right, let's talk about driving with the GT Neo steering wheel. I mean, I've told you so many details about it and we've talked about getting the, in the software all installed, but I have a little more to talk about when it comes to software, at least usage, even though I really want to focus more on just how it really performs. And, you know, I talked about the substantial weight, the heftiness, the density that the wheel felt. It was a really solid wheel. And at that $289 price tag, I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. At that price, you kind of figured it would be kind of lightweight, but it is not. It is really solid feeling. So now that it's in my hands, I got a ton of Newton meters driving it, and it is just as solid. So sitting here right there, there is just, there's no flex, there's no twist, there's no movement. That NRG style quick release is super strong, and I mean, everything is as solid as you could ask for. So when comparing it to so many steering wheels with this many features, you could easily pay double, triple, quadruple this price to get something that didn't feel any stronger than that this actually feels in my hands so while we are talking about feeling in our hands let's talk about the grips themselves they are a little bit harder a rubber than i'm accustomed to i mean usually a wheel's gonna have like a suede leather fabric which has a little bit of give i mean it's not like you feel squish but it is just a little soft in your hands this rubber is definitely on the hard side and it's not squishy at all i definitely prefer using gloves and it's not because i'm concerned about wear i don't think you're going to wear these grips out anytime soon it's more about comfort and with that we also have the ergonomics you've got that kind of flat blade outer rim and then it kind of curves around for your fingers but it is super comfortable and it's ergonomic so if you're the guy who likes to interlock your thumbs which you shouldn't do it, it still is, feels real comfortable with your thumbs on top or your thumbs in the, the interlocked position. Either way works. And I have plenty of clearance for my hand to wrap around and activate all four paddle shifters. So when I drive with the gloves, I'm super duper comfortable. I could drive all day with this steering wheel in total comfort. Now, when we take the gloves off, it's still a very, very comfortable shape and it still feels good and I have good grip on that handle and that seam that is there that we can visually see, I can feel it if I really press my hand in, my palm in on that spot and try to feel for it. But when just driving naturally, it's really not there and I think it'll probably wear down a little bit over time as well. But it is comfortable 
and it is grippy. Uh, you're definitely not going to feel sliding around. And I haven't had any issues with sweating or overheating my hands. It's, it's felt really good. And, and But I think it's such a racing wheel. And maybe that's what it is. That right now, like my left hand just feels more natural on the steering wheel. Almost like it was intended to be driven with gloves, quite honestly. Which I think more and more sim racers are using gloves when they're racing. All right, now, other things. Let's talk about the paddle shifters. They are magnetic paddle shifters. They are aluminum. A lot of wheels have gone to carbon fiber, and maybe that's an area where you can save a little money going with aluminum. Now, aluminum is super strong. So, I mean, they are stiff. They are snappy. You can hear that click. You can feel that click. It is a, a good feeling, and it feels that I could last a long time. There's no wiggle in the paddle. It's a really nicely done setup. No noises, just a good paddle shifter. Now, I don't use it. Now, in a formula-shaped wheel like this, the lower paddles, you can map them for clutches, stop, you know, starting the races and things like that. I honestly have a clutch on my pedal set, so I just use that because that's what I have mapped in game. But they're there, and they can be mapped as buttons if you prefer, or they can be the levers, which are pretty long travel. So you can see the amount of distance that they move while I'm driving. And it is a fair amount. So uh, also aluminum paddles on that. The shifter ones, by the way, you can move them outward about a quarter inch if you wanted them further out towards the grips. I like the way that it felt stock. Now let's get back to the shape. It is a formula style. I call it a butterfly style wheel. No display. And for me, and maybe it's because I'm short, but I have no display blocking and obstructing my view. It is as clean as it gets over the top of the wheel. So depending on where your monitors are positioned with your driving rig, you're gonna see more of the screen. You're gonna see the on camera or on screen steering wheel. Uh, you're gonna see those controls. You're gonna have no obstruction except for when you're fully turned and you've got that hand in your way because it's physically in your way when you're driving. So we are comfortable, it's stiff, it's robust, it's shifters are nice and reactive and have a good feeling. Now the front of the wheel, that's where all the real spectacularness is. I love being able to change the backlit colors. That totally helps me with memorization. So when I use my personal scheme versus any of their predetermined schemes, I know exactly why certain things are blue or red or yellow. And I know red, you don't press red buttons on my steering wheel without it meaning something probably detrimental to racing like towing or hitting the pit limiter. So they're red telling me danger. Now things like headlights or clearing my visor, maybe I'm gonna have them be white because it's really, hey, it kind of makes common sense. Lights, white, right? And then I have all my communications in a certain color or mapping or what I use for pit stop functions like scrolling through the menus or selecting tires or fuel amounts, all of those in particular colors. So all of that helps me. And then with those stickers, being able to put the stickers on top of the buttons just makes it that much better. I mean, it's like, so now I have the color and the visual reminder. I mean, if I went on a straightaway, look down and remember, I couldn't remember which one, which one is my flash button? Ah, oh, there it is. So it just makes it so personalized, so customizable and, and very much in the right sim direction. I mean, there was a button that said exit, for example, uh, which a lot of uh, sticker sets won't even have things that are like in-game commands or left and right arrow commands. So even the buttons are, are both automotive or racing as well as the kind of things you'd expect in sim racing as well. Now, all of the buttons are, let's call them semi-shielded. So there's a little bit of a rim so that you're not going to just accidentally hit a button. You can differentiate very easily with your fingers while driving which button is which, right? And that feels good and, and that's nice. The other is the click on the buttons is, is you can hear it right there. It's, it's a solid click. It's a fairly short travel, but you know you've pressed it in. And more importantly, you have to do it with intention. If you didn't mean to press any of these buttons, it's not gonna happen just by moving your hand around. It, it's, it's really easy to find the buttons with your hands even without looking. 
and it's all or your fingers I should say and it's also easy to uh, know when you've clicked and not get any accidental clicks which is essential you also have these thumb rotaries and they are aluminum covered dials which feel really nice when you're not wearing gloves you can feel their metal right off the bat by the temperature of the surface they've got a little texture to them which makes it easy to grip it so when I'm going down the straightaway really easy to twist that up and down with either thumb and and again uh, a good positive click they are a little light so it is easy to spin them but the detent is significant enough that unless I just rip my thumb along it I can go one click at a time but if I needed multiple clicks it definitely can be done so depending on the sim or how big of an adjustment you're trying to make so with driving right now I have those two dials that's four total controls without even releasing the wheel in the slightest. When I move my thumbs upward, I can get these top three buttons on each side. So that's six more right there. And I haven't even released my grip or, or even pivoted my palm on the wheel. So I've got that uh, 10 total controls right there without any change in the way I hold the steering wheel. Moving down, getting to those lower two. I do have to lift my thumb, which isn't a big deal, and this is common on most steering wheels. But what we're talking about is that 10 of our controls are mappable and easily usable while driving without having to do anything on the steering wheel, as long as you remember what those controls are. Now, the internal four dials, these are really cool. And you've got, what, 12 positions and a good amount of uh, indent, so you can feel each click really noticeably. Uh, there's no labeling on these, but you certainly could make your own or use any of the stickers from the buttons. They'd be a little hard to see. But you've got the backlit colors, which are also changeable. So maybe a little bit of common sense. And, you know, maybe red, for example, could be fuel mixture because it could affect the temperature of your car. Or maybe it makes more sense to you to have red be your brakes. So you can go ahead and put a red backlight on backlight ring on that dial and maybe that'll help you remember, or you could just make it look really cool with the styling of the way you want your rim to be, which is, again, so cool about programmable backlight buttons on a steering wheel. So those four inside rotaries, they are twist only. There's no button in them. They're just twist only to their positions or left and right buttons, as I have them mapped right here. And I definitely have to reach my hand off the wheel to do it. It would be almost as hard to try to operate them with my thumb might as well just do the hand and get it on there and it'll happen that much quicker for sure and i really didn't mention the thumb sticks very much because honestly they're the the ones that i use the least often while in the sim for me i have one of them mapped to do field of view and seat height adjustment so when i'm changing from car to car if i need to make anything i have up down left and right mapped on this right one so I can change my, my view. And then I have the horizon up and down on the twist function because it is a seven way switch. So up, down, left, right, twist, left, twist, right. And then the final one being the press in, which you can hear right there because it's got a pretty decent tactile feedback as well. Meanwhile, I have the left one set up more for like pit stop function. So I have it mapped for two tires or four tires half a tank versus full tank and honestly i can't right now remember what i mapped the twist and the push button for but i definitely mapped those as well so again so many functions built into the wheel and they all have a decent tactile even the left right up down on the thumbsticks have a good amount of tactile and are easy to operate in the intended direction which which can be difficult with a little tiny thumbstick sometimes so uh, good job on those. So uh, all of the functions on the wheel work really nice. Okay, and I guess, I guess I've saved my favorite part for last. I really, really like, uh, I haven't even counted the amount of uh, digits in the display here of the rev light, but it's probably the most I've ever seen in that amount of space. And it looks really cool and it's fully programmable in color as well. And I like the way it came out of default. I didn't make even make adjustments to that on my own personal one. But you could change the color if you wanted different colors or any kind of different pattern. I like the way this one blinks crazy pink when you've gone too far and you're, it's telling you you are too late for your shift, buddy. Uh, really, really cool LED strip. And then 
not only are the buttons backlit, which is so cool, and programmable, which makes them that much cooler, and, and sure, a lot of wheels do that, but the next thing I've, I have to confess I've never seen before, this wheel now has functions from the game that will flash. So for example, when I hit the pit limiter, my top four buttons right now, because I told it I wanted the top four buttons, start fl blinking black or, or no light, light, no light, light. And it makes it really, really noticeable that I have engaged my pit limiter. And that is really cool. The other thing is it has flag conditions. So on this wheel, the way I have it set up, the bottom two lights at the beginning of the race, they're going to flash green when there's a, uh, when there's a, uh, a caution or a spin out, they're going to flash. Uh, when I got a black flag, they just started blinking to black. So you've got these warning indicators. Uh, it's capable of doing ABS and traction control. You're going to get about the same kind of results, by the way, with those lights and their activation as you do with the haptic pedal reactors. So it'll sort of be sim dependent. And my understanding is that all that will work with Sim Hub as well. I'm just running the default software from Sim Magic and, and, and quite honestly, very happy with the results. So everything I've talked about when I'm driving this feels like the kind of things that I would say about a wheel that, again, could easily cost $600. I, I mean, no joke. You could easily get a wheel that was $600 that I'd be talking about it being made of of even the same kind of uh, carbon fiber composite material, backlit buttons that are programmable, uh, paddle shifters and the paddle levers, uh, a really good solid construction, an NRG style quick release. I mean, as I go through that list, like that four uh, rotary independent uh, dials, uh, thumb dials, when I go through that list, that's, that again is the kind of list of the kind of features that you would expect on a five or six hundred dollar wheel and then again you could expect those same features from a two thousand dollar steering wheel so all in all i i love the performance of this steering wheel it is uh absolutely one of my favorite butterfly style rims when it comes to whether you want to display or don't want to display i think that's a personal choice so i don't really think i could say that one is better than the other I say that for me, now maybe it's because I run other displays or have so many other things on my rig, I don't need a display on my, on my wheel all this time. Sometimes it's really nice to have that real clean look over the top feel. And in this case, whether you have the lights programmed for memory or just to look cool, it's a great looking wheel when I'm in my, you know, semi blacked out sim racing environment where everything's lit up real nice and I can see the buttons real clear. And uh, again, it just performs really well and, and feels great out on track. Well, I think I've told you everything that you need to know about the GT Neo steering wheel, but in case you missed anything, let's go ahead and break it down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line. Starting off with the good, and that being great price. Looks super cool. Low profile top visibility. NRG style quick release, improved. Can work with any direct drive wheelbase, maglink. Feels heavy duty. Flashing lights, flags, pit lane, traction control, ABS. Programmable color buttons. Cool rev light. Stickers for buttons. And now on to the not so good. I, I, I don't have anything negative to say about this steering wheel. Uh, uh, okay, let's really nitpick. Oh, or, okay, anything that I could say about this steering wheel that I, I could think could be improved could be immediately negated by that $289 price point. So, for example, uh, the four rotaries. This is a plastic knob it feels great it totally gets the job done and if that's a way that they kept the price under three hundred dollars i'm totally fine with that same thing with the thumbsticks uh, a plastic top but it works fine and and it kept the cost down uh 
what else? What else could be better about this steering wheel? I, I just, uh, yes, it could be made of a real crushed forged carbon fiber and it would cost a fortune. Uh, it could have a display, but that's a totally different type of wheel for people who want a display. That's not really anything you can knock this wheel for. Uh, it could have carbon fiber paddles. Again, it would just cost more money and not be an improvement on the steering wheel. And then on top of that, the fact that they made this outside of their or available to outside of their ecosystem when i present a great wheel whether it's some magic or moza or fanatic i always feel bad because i'm thinking there are people with direct drive wheels who want to use that steering wheel and can't now moza solved it with their hub and now sim magic have solved it with their mag link so no we're not testing it today but we're going to test that on a show that's going to come out with this one so we're going to see how this works but it means this wheel will have a wraparound cable and be available to any direct drive wheel out on the market. And that is absolutely awesome, absolutely fantastic, and, and is a step in, a, in the greatest of directions for Sim Magic. So very, very impressed with this wheel. It's been a pleasure to test it. It's been a pleasure to show it to you guys. And I know it sounds like I'm just madly in love with it. Well. I kind of am. I mean, what more can I say? So I hope you've enjoyed this show. If you have, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can find out when our next video comes out. And thank you for watching. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.